Hey everybody, I just got back from my trip. I had a great time, and now I'm coming back and playing a bunch of Gwent. And the Gwent deck that I want to be showcasing today is a hybrid Francisca. It has mulligan cards and ambush cards and hand buffing cards. We combine these to get a general strategy that I think is overlooked by people. That strategy is buffing up a card in your hand, mulliganing it out, and then pulling it onto the board with Eyes and Grim or with its own effect, with Illyrian. I had Roach in this deck at one point and used that to bamboozle my opponent. And just get a huge amount of points, just flip onto the board. Now let's look at the two main win conditions of the deck. The first win condition is your round one and two win condition is that is tricking your opponent to thinking you have less points on the board with Illyrian. You get four ambush cards onto the board and then you put Trugial face down. It is important to note that golds can count as elves for Illyrian. So we have Isengrim and Francisca. Those are your golden elves. And if you were to play, let's say, Isengrim into Truvial and you would mulligan out two war dancers with Francisca, you would have five elves on the board. And when your opponent, uh, when your opponent passed, Truvial would flip over and Illyrian would come onto the board. Now, if you play Truvial into the range row and Illyrian goes to the range row, Illyrian will be buffed by Truvial from my experience. I haven't tested this, but I'm pretty sure that's how it works. So you can use that to your advantage. There aren't too many ranged row cards, but we have a lot of we have enough agile cards to make up for it. Uh, Vanguards, you will probably not play in round one. I would recommend not playing them there. You want to keep them for round two and three, uh, preferably round three. That's when they'll be the strongest, and that's when you will be able to benefit from a round three win condition. Fewer people are playing Scorches, I'm seeing, but there are a lot of people still playing Regis Higher Vampire. And you need to note that mulliganing all your vanguards out of your hand, while that is recommended by most players, can backfire if they're running Regis Higher Vampire and Renew. And you might find yourself down two of your win condition cards and them having a huge Regis Higher Vampire. Okay. Now, uh, let's talk a little bit more about the elves in the deck. We have the Dragoons. The soccer supports are not elves, so you, need it. you can use that to play up round one a little longer before you bamboozle. Uh, I already mentioned Isengrim and Francisca. You have the Brigades here. You're not going to play the Vanguards for Illyrian because, again, they're round three. And you have the War Dancers. Technically, Yavin is an elf, but you play it on the opponent's side of the board, and it does not contribute to Illyrian. However, if they decoy uh, Yavin and play it on your side of the board, Yavin can pull Illyrian. And that has happened to me before. <laughs> so without further ado, we're going to play some games. We're going to start off in casual, and then we're going to move into some ranked games. I'm going to play a few different versions in this video, because the footage is over the course of two days. So... I've done some tweaking. Most notably, I've added uh, Commander's Horn. If you want to change some cards, I would start off with Wily. Wily is more of a tech card against Consume Monster and uh, Skellige. But other than that, it's you don't need that many cards into the Siege Row, and it can sometimes be a liability, especially if you have no good targets for Wily and you have to kill your own ambush card. He will force you to a target a card, and it could be on your side of the board, which you will see. <laughs> okay, my first game is up against a Calve player, a good old John. We're about even in MMR, so it makes this, you know, a battle of equals, I guess. <laughs> Though my MMR is much lower than it should be, <laughs> my opinion. Okay. So I'm mulliganing out cards. I'm having a little trouble at this point because I don't know exactly what I want to get rid of. I decide to go with the... Um, with Morin. Probably not the best idea. Could have used Morin for other things. But Calvay is not really weak against Morin, in my opinion. 
I have to be very lucky to get value out of her. So, I lose the coin toss, which is unfortunate. We're going to play the Dragoon first, because that's what you always play first when you are <laughs> playing a hand buffing deck. And now this tells me that my opponent is playing a spy deck immediately, which is great. We're going to now uh, buff up my Illyrian again. So he's using his leader ability quite early. He's not playing the golems. Which, uh, if he were playing the golems, we'd just get rid of them with the trappers. He's not as much deck fitting as he could have had, given the fact that he's not running the golems. But he is running a lot of buffs. Which tells me he's probably playing a Fragilla Vigo deck, which has been popularized recently by Swim as opposed to the deck I had made a few weeks ago <laughs> doing the same thing. I decide to go with my leader ability here. The leader ability counts as an elf, so that's important with doing the math. Um, I decide to push out uh, Illyrian because you know, obviously I want to pull her with uh, the bamboozling effect. And I get Isengrim, and I'm super happy about that. I push out a Trapper. Controversial, kind of, to do that. So my opponent's getting a lot of tempo out of these plays. I'm actually kind of scared. They're getting ridiculously high tempo. Now I'm going to play an Isengrim onto the range row. This will allow me to more effectively get my Bamboozle off, but I still need to play one more Elf. If you count all the Elves on the board, note that the Hawker Sports are not Elves, I only have four. So I still need to get one more on, and one of the reasons why I decided to play Isengrim now rather than later is I might want to put on the Trapper. Okay, so my opponent got all three of his Impera uh, Brigades, are they Brigades or Enforcers? Whatever. He got his win condition for round one onto the board. That kind of scares me. He gets really lucky here and pulls out a lot more spies. I decide to play my uh, Commander's Horn here. Okay. Now I could play Siri. That is an option. However, I did not think this through. I have all the cards left in my hand are elves. I'm thinking that, ooh, if I get the bamboozle off, I win. I have way more than 10 points on the board. However, he gets a 16 point tr tr stamble for tremors. So, 19 points worth of value right there. Ah, and I'm just 4 points shy of winning the round. Uh, it's upsetting. But... We still at least pushed him pretty hard. Okay, I got all my win conditions into my hand, so I'm pretty, feeling pretty good. So he blew up most of his value in round one. He doesn't really have anything else to do. He can't do the Vigo stuff anymore. He's not running... Um, what do you call him? <laughs> Siege experts or whatever. Engineers. It gives the uh, resilience. Or at least I haven't seen any. I'm going to use the uh, Siri there because it's... Uh, it's really not... It's a low value card. I, wouldn't ra I would rather keep the other cards in my hand. Case of shenanigans. Okay. 
Okay. I'm gonna play my Vanguard. I'm separating out my points. Okay, here is a mis uh, here is a mistake. I did not play do the positioning correctly there. Now in Gwent, you don't always think about positioning, and that was a positioning error. But I also noticed that I can play this card onto that lane and not worry about a Geralt Igni. My opponent did not play around Morin, so I get to get value there. Pretty good value. I say. <coughs> Excuse me. And now my opponent needs like a huge amount of points. 28 points to win. Or at least tie. Well, that was a good game. Let's go to a little harder one. Okay, now I'm up against a rank 18 player. I'm understandably scared. When this was recorded, I was... It was really late at night, and I had just gone in back from working nine hours at work. <laughs> so I'm not, a, I'm not at the top of my game, but I did pretty well, I think, in this game. All things considered. I'm going to do my typical mulligans out here, and I'm probably going to open up with the Dragoon. I'm fortunate to have won the coin toss. When you're playing against the person at this MMR, a coin toss is everything. Because it's really a battle of card advantage more than anything else. So, my opponent's going to think about their what they're going to do in the first round. You have so many cards in your hand, and if you're going to be at this high MMR, you're going to spend some time working out your plays. I don't spend as much time thinking about my plays, and that's why I'm not a rank 18 player. I just instant put a card down on the board, and this is casual, so... Oh, God. That... Avalok is the bane of my existence. I do not know if... Saskia will go back onto the board if you mulligan her out with a leader, and I don't want to experiment with that in this battle. So my opponent uses Nature's Gift into an Aromancy, into a Torrential Rain. That is three procs for his win condition. Ouch. I'm going to go clear the weather there. My opponent uses the leader ability. He pulls out the aromancy again. And they decide to play one of the uh, weather cards that he has not played yet. That's two procs for his win condition. I'm gonna clear the weather once more. Now I have three elves on the board. Now I only have one. <laughs> Decide to put down Teruvial. Note that Teruvial does have nine strength. This will be very important. Now I have three elves on the board because you can count Yaven for that. I'm thinking about this because I'm considering how uh, <laughs> Illyrian will pop out. So now we're gonna play Sappers. Now, that's very controversial for me to play Sappers or Morin here because I have Isengrim in my hand and I drew into all my ambush cards in this version of the deck. I decide to play the Sappers anyways. Now this is going to be a major mistake by on my part. I could have killed off my Hawker support. Instead, I played a Morin, and that was really dumb of me. So please forgive me that. <laughs> my opponent uses an Azure's Thunder. Note that Wily has to hit something when it's played. And I did not know this when I was... 
I played him at, at this point. And it's going to mean I'm going to have to target one of my own units. Again, this is the problem of not spending too much time thinking about your plays. Now that I have no more ambush cards in my deck, I can play a Wild uh, Isengrim because it's just going to be 7 strength gold without too much worry. My opponent decides to use a Spores. He gets pretty good value on using it on my Wily. It's 6 points of value there. I'm going to use my Commander's Horn. You can target face down cards with Commander's Horn. Get around it. He doesn't get very much value out of his Stamford Tremors. Now I'm going to put down a good old Isengrim. And my opponent now needs to make a decision. And they made the wrong decision. They miscalculated. They assumed Teruvial was 6 strength. If Teruvial was 6 strength, I would have had to play another card to win that round. However, my opponent is quite prepared for the final round. So we're going to go into round two, and I have my card advantage cards, which are great. I'm going to push out Saskia. Definitely do not want that in my hand. And there is Illyrian. We couldn't get Illyrian out on the board this round game, but we tried our hardest. Plans don't always go the way you want them to. Now we're going to play Siri. A lot of spell Scoia'tael players run Dimerium Shackles, so I kind of expect this, but at least, you know, I tried. <laughs> I'm actually thinking it's a good idea to try to push out my opponent's win condition because they're huge! And I know that I have an answer to one of his win conditions if I can delay long enough into it. I actually make a mistake here. I forget about this possibility. And they use double pestilence to get huge 11 points of value. Uh, 11 points is okay, I guess. But yeah, it, it hurt to see that happen. They use my leader ability because I have to keep pushing my opponent. The, pushing out the trapper was probably not the best idea, but it gets me more um, blacklisting, which is good. Okay, I got one of his win conditions out of the way. And he can't use the double uh, win condition through uh, Ifling right now. So I'm going to play out the brigade, and I'm going to bait my opponent into thinking I have a Geralt Igni. By moving Yaven into the Cedra. My opponent, afraid of Geralt Igni, is going to have to play some points. And they decide to use Azur's Double Cross. Pretty good play. I pass. There's no way I'm going to get ahead of this. And I don't really want to play Milva into that. But I do have my win condition in my hand against this particular kind of deck. Because Milva resets a card. Great. I'm happy to have gotten um, the Elven War Dancer because it's just extra points. Hogger support ain't all that good, but it's good enough. Yeah. Now, if my opponent could see my hand. Uh, what I just did would have been a easy way to win because Milva will not go off if my opponent has already passed. Okay. So I've now reset the strength of his protector and I have won the round. Ugh. That was exhausting. But 
<laughs> I'm proud of my victory against the Reiki team player. Uh, that misplay of my opponent on the first round, assuming that I wasn't going to get enough strength from my Truvial, won me the game. Okay, this is our ranked game for the set. Doing pretty good in ranked. I have, if you want to see more of my ranked matches, I'm going to put them in the description as unlisted footage. One of the reasons why I didn't do the War Dancer first is that I, if I blacklist it, I'm not going to get another War Dancer to uh, mulligan out later. So I'd rather get that done sooner rather than later. Against Consume, I like to play more in early because all of their units are less than 5 strength. Now that's probably a good card for my opponent to have uh, played because he's probably got Arrakis Behemoths in his hand. So he played around the uh, Morin pretty well. I'm thinking that this is going to be a short round. And I also want to bait out any uh, lock cards my opponent might have. Okay, this is a great opportunity to showcase Wily being amazing. The card is now deleted. The Arrakis Behemoth gets some value here. I'm going to take a risk and see if I can pull Wily back into my hand, and I did. I have 25 points on the board. I could easily just pass here. And I could have used Milva later as a counter to any points he decides to try to keep. These Dragoons could have come out onto the board much earlier. Okay. This uh, Regis Higher Vampire is actually really annoyed. <laughs> he was able to eat one of my sappers. You, could, you got a glimpse of it going into the graveyard there. I'm doing my Illyrian math right now. As you look at onto the board, I have an Elven Wardancer, Isengrim, a Sapper, a Dragoon, and a Truvial. All of which do not count towards my... <laughs> all of which count towards Illyrian. I could also play the Dragoon, I mean the um, Hawker support, and I could play Wily. I'm going to hit the Arrakis Behemoth because that will reduce the amount of uh, Arrakises he could pull with it. Now, I have the option here, if I don't want to pull a Lyrian with any of my cards, to just play the Hawker Support. Or I could just pass. Both work, really. The Hawker support only represents an extra 9 points onto the board because it gets 2 points from Teruvial. And I have a feeling my opponent can benefit if I play wait take too long in this round. So my opponent decides to try to push a lot of points onto the board with his leader. He decides to eat his Vran Warrior, which confuses me. But I guess it doesn't really matter. Says he's going to pass the next round anyways. He thinks he's 15 points ahead. He's doing some trivial math. And he's saying, oh, 50 points is enough to win. Too bad. <laughs> and I give him a bad move. He didn't uh, factor in the elves. This is why it's important when you're playing against Francisca to do your... Elf math. Math. Excuse me. <laughs> okay, I got one of my vanguards. I'm going to just pass. Because I need more card advantage. I already have one card over my opponent. Two cards is going to be amazing.
I'm assuming my opponent has something like the crones, so that's why I'm kind of being careful. I actually am worried about what I should mulligan here, because the trappers are great. So there's a really, I'm really scared of what the mulligan here. So I decided to go with the brigade. I think I, no, I went with the support, Ooh, excuse me. The support was probably better than the brigade, but I think I could move cards around in my hand. Like in the first round, the first card you play is going to be the Dragoon. Dragoon is just a great card and you need to get it out early. It's just how it works. My opponent's playing most of their consume cards already, so I don't have to worry about too much consuming going on in this game. There is the Regis Higher Vampire, which is going to be scary. If I were my opponent, I would have saved this a few cards later. Or I would have saved it for a um, Milva. But then again, not all players are thinking about Milva right now. So you can see it's 15 strength, that means he's definitely... Uh, eight one of my vanguards, which are at nine strength in my deck. Gonna use my leader ability. I'm no longer afraid of a renew into either Milva or Regis Higher Vampire. I'm gonna push out my brigades to push out Yaven. Gonna keep my <laughs> trappers in my hand. Now, in my mind, I'm thinking of playing Siri next, but uh, I end up doing something slightly different. <laughs> my opponent's now making decisions. This game has not gone in my the way my opponent hoped it would. He's going to look at my deck a little bit, but there's nothing higher than 7 strength in here. And they're all roughly the same strength. Arguably, I could have saved Milva for this point. Okay. I actually wanted to play Siri, but instead I played the Brigade. I got an eager trigger figure. Oh, yeah. The best card he could revive would either be Truvial or Wily. He goes for the Wily, and he makes a mistake that really confuses me. He decides to hit my brigade. I'm not exactly sure why. Now, if he had removed the three straight unit out of the board, he would not have got it uh, messed up by his. <sighs> his Becker's Twisted Mirror.